Welcome to the Sitting Bull College commencement. Dawson Yellowfat will now sing the flag song and Celeste Long Elk will give the invocation and student benediction. congratulate all the 2020 graduates from the Sitting Bull College and I'd also would like to thank all the staff, all the instructors and everyone who played a main role in us all obtaining our education and to be able to be an example for our children, for our grandchildren, for our parents and for other students and for those in my bracket, the um, older than average student it's been a wonderful experience and I just want to congratulate everybody and let everyone know that I would encourage you to also return to the Sitting Bull College and keep coming back. No matter how difficult it is, it's what life is all about, the difficulty. And the one beautiful thing is when you look back and know that you stuck with it and you had family there supporting you and friends from afar, you know that you can accomplish anything with each other supporting each other. And with that, I'm going to say a prayer in my Lakota language. So I ask that um, you all either put your heads down or um, we, we normally don't say prayers with our electronics, but I'm going to do this because of the fact that um, our whole situation has changed worldwide and we are now staying in touch with one other with one another online Daku was terwa blake. Dua you ha okche. Daku dua daku chi hunter one chigna. Iayabna family ish. Dua dua kikesh. One chigna. Mother's cog na vehicle na na car na. Mother's car na white. Hatchel you ha dua lochim hunter one chigna. Iayabna. Okia cha he ionic pi cha heslwa na daku yu hachile yakache 
sunrises, lena na na mornings, sunsets, hena yuha tanku yuha shi hena yakake, chant chanter matagi he wanker. Na naku sitting bu college campus le naku le yakake. Daku le ya chincha sitting bu han hachi dua yuha chi okiakena. Let's put our minds together. Chaho o chunku chawana dua yuha lecho najib na yoki yakake. Na nish el lecho una hena naji. Shantemet haki when you kick there. No one a le dokeshke with chalking the hair, Naku hesoria, Daku yuhashi hesoria. Chowana kchima u na omakia. Oham ino. With that being said, I just want to thank all of you for taking this time and being with us at the Sitting Bull College and supporting us worldwide. And I just want to close with each one of you to remember to continue to take care of one another, continue supporting one another. And as we go through this coronavirus together, that we learn to love and have compassion. I have exercised that and, and I attest that it is the one thing that will keep us all above this storm. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Sitting Bull College's virtual graduation ceremony. We're really excited to have you here. Um, students, graduates, we're very excited to, to have you here so we can honor you, to help you celebrate your, your huge success. Uh, I know this is really an unusual time for all of us, for your families and for you, but we wanna make sure that we're making this day special because we want you to know that we, we think that you're a special person. You're able to finish in this time that, that's a very uncertain time for all of us, but you, you didn't give up, you continued. And so we're very, very excited to, to honor you and to help you celebrate. So thank you for everything you do and we hope you have an awesome, awesome day with us. A better wash day. Good day. Graduates, it is a good day here at Standing Rock for you. All these years, now's the time. It's your day. Although we're in uncertain times, we need you as the graduates to stay proud, stay strong. You're the future for Standing Rock and we're so proud of you. You're coming out of a, a college of legendary status, Sittenbow College. It's a beautiful thing. Again, I would say this on your day, graduates. Stay focused on the future. Stay strong. Set your goals high. Be not afraid. Be the change. On behalf of us here at the tribe office, the chairman's office, and all the people of Standing Rock, we say good job. I would leave you with this, since we have no goodbye in our language. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay home, save lives. Thank you. Good afternoon, fellow Sitting Bow College graduates. First of all, congratulations. My name is Summer Taken Alive. I'm from the Running Antelope District. I am the daughter of Crawford and Juliana Taken Alive, both of whom are Sitting Bow College alumni. In 2017, I earned my associate's degree in human services, and I com currently completed my Bachelor of Social Work degree. It's a strange time in the universe. Nobody planned for it, and we will never forget it. This is not our typical graduation. We would usually be gathered together in our caps and gowns, being cheered on by family, friends, classmates, instructors, and professors. One by one, we would ascend onto stage, our names would be announced, and our diplomas would be handed to us by our college president. However, this year is very different. All that we've gone through since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic is absolutely unbelievable. 
our classes were canceled and transferred online, leaving us little to no time to say our goodbyes and thank yous to our instructors and professors, or to create any final memories with our classmates and friends before the transition to our lives after college. While there are benefits to online classes, like being able to just get up, turn on the computer and learn from home, it also feels like a huge negative because we are missing in-person in in interaction. We are also missing the hugs and handshakes that keep us connected. However, we have persevered like the strong Lakota Dakotas we are. When the fall 2018 semester began, Hokshila, Lauren, Chantel and I became the first Bachelor of Social Work cohort here at Sidimbo College. When our first class began that semester, we were all anxious and excited to meet the new social work instructor. Neither of us had ever met her before, so we didn't know what to expect. Then in walked Alicia. We all introduced ourselves and classes began. From that point on, we knew that Alicia would have, an, have a pivotal impact on our lives and she was going to teach us so much. My academic journey with the Bachelor of Social Work program has been powerful. I say powerful because it completely changed what I thought social work was. It challenged me and completely pushed me to my limits, but overall it has been an extremely rewarding and learning experience. I've grown tremendously as a student, daughter, cousin, niece, granddaughter, friend, and future social worker. I've learned that social work is a very vast and multidimensional profession. Alicia would always tell us social workers wear many hats, and that's true. As an aspiring social worker, I've grown to notice the core, that the core values and beliefs that social workers abide by have a significant, if not the same, values and beliefs as the Ocheti Shakoi, our Lakota Dakota culture, and with City Bowl College. The Bachelor of Social Work program does a really great job at incorporating those values in each class, allowing us to see how they resemble one another. Taking the time to contemplate my experience at Sitting Bow College and with the Bachelor of Social Work program it makes me feel very thankful. Thankful that I had the opportunity to learn from some of the most amazing, intelligent, and generous instructors like Roxanne Howes, Tim Crayler, Alicia Gord Mackin, and Leslie Gipp. I'm also grateful for my classmates as well. We spend a lot of time with each other. We helped each other, encouraged each other when times got a little rough, and we grew together. I would like to take a minute to give special recognition to Alicia. Alicia, I just wanted to tell you how thankful I am to have you in my life. You helped me see my dreams in a new light. You helped me with my work, made suggestions, and told me of strengths I had that I couldn't see. Outside of class, you asked how I was doing and my, how my assignments were coming along. You genuinely cared and would do anything to help me achieve my goals. Any success I will achieve will not have been possible without you. Thank you for teaching with your heart and soul. Thank you for being the inspiration for me to continue my pursuit of happiness. And thank you for being my instructor. Lastly, to my fellow graduates, may you love and appreciate your parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and your brothers and sisters. May you cherish all those who participated in your educational and social growth. May you become whoever it is you want to be and hope to be and can be. I'd like to end with a quote from my late Unchi Imogene. Your education is the most important thing and no one can take that away from you. Again, congratulations. Hello and congratulations to the 2020 graduates of Sitting Bull College. I am truly humbled and honored to celebrate this very special day with you. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Just between us, today, June 5th, is my birthday and I can't think of a better birthday gift than to be invited to share some thoughts with you. I won't however be revealing my age. That will remain a secret. While this graduation ceremony may not be what you had originally dreamed of as you began your college careers, I think the drive through graduation idea is an exceptional display of creativity and innovation in the face of one of the most unique challenges our nation has faced in decades, COVID-19. I am grateful to the administration of Sitting Bull College, President Laurel Vermillion, the Board of Directors, and the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe for inviting me to share some thoughts with you today. The role of speaking at a commencement ceremony is a great honor 
typically reserved for individuals who will inspire you and provide encouragement for what may come next in your lives. But I'm not sure if I will be able to inspire you nearly as much as you all have inspired me just by reaching this huge occasion in your lives. More and more lately, I've been thinking about storytelling and the impact it has on our lives. Stories that tell us where we came from, where we're going, and who we choose to be. I came across the definition of student success that was defined and written by Sitting Bull College students. And it says, to be a successful student at Sitting Bull College, you do not forget who you are and where you came from. The Sitting Bull College Student Code of Conduct includes a description of Lakota Dakota values as a guide for students to follow as they travel along the path of their educational journey. I found these values very inspiring and they include respect, generosity, compassion, integrity, patience, honesty, humility, wisdom, bravery, and fortitude. When reading the, the book, The Lakota Way, written by Joseph Marshall III, who is Oglala Lakota, I learned that these values and a couple more, including truth and love, are core qualities that have been passed down through Lakota generations through the storytelling of elders. In his book, Marshall says, the grandmas and grandpas were the living repositories for all those wonderful stories told to them by their elders from generations before. The stories included lessons about these values, like the humility embodied in the legendary Lakota leader, Crazy Horse. I'm reminded of a phrase Crazy Horse used during his time, and it is Sutka Yuha, which means to rise above. Joseph Marshall also says that stories continue to strengthen Lakota society. I can think of no better time in history when these qualities have been more important to humanity. I believe that we could all lead happier and healthier lives if these same core qualities were part of our moral fiber and daily living. The story of the namesake of your college, Chief Sitting Bull, is one of pride, generosity, spirituality, and unshakable bravery to stand up for his beliefs and people. Chief Sitting Bull's impact on history has undoubtedly influenced many. As one of the famous leaders among the Hunkpapa and throughout the world, he was known as a holy man and valiant warrior who stood against the evolving reshaping of native lands. A figurehead in the Battle of Little Bighorn, Sitting Bull's return to Standing Rock in 1883 marked a pivotal point in history where he became a strong voice for all Native American people. Universally renowned for his generosity and his deep concern for people, Chief Sitting Bull was an ardent opponent of poverty and was often seen giving money to the Don Trouden of cities he visited. Chief Sitting Bull's legacy of speaking out on behalf of his people and being an advocate in the face of imperialism and broken treaties signifies why he continues to be revered to this day. Today, his story carries on, his spirit lives on, and continues to influence people to be courageous for their beliefs and live a life of gratitude and service for others. All of you graduating today carry your own stories and legacy, whether they have been passed down through your family or the new stories you create every day. Your memories as a college student during the COVID-19 pandemic, transitioning to online education, and experiencing graduation through this amazing drive through event will continue to provide stories for years to come. It is my own story that brings me here today. As First Lady, it is my ultimate goal to end the shame and stigma that surrounds the disease of addiction. I have lived experience with addiction. I have been in recovery from alcohol addiction for over 18 years. In my role representing the state of North Dakota, 
I have had the opportunity to share my story of struggle in finding recovery. Along the way, I've met so many people, each with their own unique story of how they've been invicted, imba- impacted by addiction and recovery. Stories of parents devastated from losing their son to an opioid overdose in his high school parking lot. Stories of lives saved by complete strangers who carried Narcan. And stories of people like Dr. Russ McDonald, president of United Tribes Technical College, who found a renewed life in recovery after going through treatment 16 times. Stories are one of the best tools to end stigma. Stories drive connection to one another, normalize difficult conversations, and can give permission for others to tell their stories and reach out for help. Stigma is commonly defined as a mark of disgrace and is a persistent barrier to confronting addiction and finding recovery. When we stigmatize an issue, we put up walls instead of building bridges. Stigma is socially constructed, based in fear and accompanied by inaccurate information and hollow misconceptions. It is shame and stigma that prevented me from sharing my own story for many years. I spent my first 15 years in recovery in silence, keeping my recovery and my battle with addiction to myself like shameful secrets. On your graduation day, this is a great time to think up your own story up till now and what your story can be in the future. My story of addiction started when I was in high school in Jamestown, North Dakota, when I first started drinking. In high school, I was an all-American teenager and I had a lot of friends. I was an honor student, involved in student council, tennis, and cheerleading. But there were many days when I couldn't get out of bed and I didn't understand why. I now know I likely had anxiety and depression. I constantly had these voices in my head telling me I was stupid. I would always make mistakes and that I needed to be perfect. I didn't have the resources or trustworthy people in school to reach out to for help with my struggles. My Nordic Viking ancestors were explorers and warriors without empathy. So growing up in my house, we didn't sit around the dinner table and talk about feelings or struggles or ask for help. Although my parents did the best they could with what they knew at the time and with how they were raised, unfortunately, My upbringing included a lot of fear based on inadequacies I felt in school and at home and the fear of not fitting in or being worthy. When I started drinking in high school, I thought I had found Nirvana. It seemed to be the answer to all of my problems. As an introvert, it helped me to live the life of an extrovert. It was basically like saying, There's a magic cure that will make me comfortable in front of other people. And I wanted to sign up for that. Unfortunately, the deep insecurities followed me after high school, which led to 20 plus years of drinking with uncontrollable urges and devastating consequences. And even though I knew I had a problem with drinking, I didn't reach out for help for over 20 years. Current statistics show that only one in 10 people who need treatment for the disease of addiction will actually seek and receive treatment. I fell into the category of the 90% of the people that don't seek treatment. I didn't seek help because of the shame and stigma of addiction. But my story reached a turning point when I decided to share my truth with someone. I really liked my team leader at work. And even though I was afraid to talk about my struggles, I made the decision to share my story with her. I requested a lunch meeting and I'm pretty sure I thought about canceling the meeting about a hundred times. At lunch, I started to share my story and I remember just looking down and crying, feeling so small as I talked through how addiction was devastating my life. When I finally took a breath, 
and had the courage to look up in her eyes. There were tears in her eyes. I fully expected to be judged and shamed because that was my deeply held fear. But instead, she looked at me and said, okay, let's do this. She didn't look at me as less than or make me feel ashamed. She simply listened, showed me compassion and supported me to go to treatment. That moment of vulnerability to share my story with someone else played a profound role in helping me find recovery. Being brave enough and vulnerable enough to share our personal stories of struggle that we think define us as defective can be life-changing. I decided to share my story of addiction and recovery publicly during my first newspaper interview as First Lady. Up to that time, I had not publicly shared that I was a person in long-term recovery. I'll never forget that day. The interview was on a cold and sunny February day at the governor's residence. I was preparing for the interview, thinking about what I would say, like how I never dreamed I would ever be first lady and how much my life had changed in just two months. All of a sudden, I had a vivid moment of clarity and I thought, I need to talk publicly about my addiction and recovery. This moment of clarity happened about five minutes before the interview. I went to my husband and I told him, I'm gonna talk about recovery in the interview and I'm gonna tell my story. His eyes lit up with surprise and excitement the way it would for anyone who has become your number one champion in your life. I positioned myself on the couch in the living room of the governor's residence and the interview started. After a few questions, the interviewer said this, you shared that you are going to be working on eliminating the stigma surrounding addiction as your platform. That's an interesting initiative for a first lady to take on. Why are you so passionate about this? I took a deep breath and with no doubt that I was doing this for all the right reasons to elevate the conversations around this disease, to show everyone that people who struggle with addiction can look like you and me and to maybe help just one person that might be moved by my story. I said, I'm very passionate about addiction because it affects me personally. I've actually been in recovery from addiction to alcohol for 15 years. I felt like a hundred pound weight had been lifted off my shoulders at that moment. All of the years of silence of shame, of wondering if I could ever talk about the significant part of my life, disappeared into thin air. The words and stories began to flow easily. I described that I had sought treatment at one point and then relapsed for eight years. I spoke of the hardship I faced when dealing with my jobs, my friends, my family, and of the hope and promise that I found in my recovery. Vulnerability is key to being able to share your stories. It is key to receiving support and for transforming the lives around you through your stories. Whether your story is about personal struggle, how you were resilient in overcoming a challenge or barrier, or how you supported a friend or family member through a difficult time. These stories liberate us from the belief that our struggles are unique and that we are alone in our struggles. Sharing stories has the opportunity to remove the idea that we are alone and can show us that there is a community of support. My story of addiction and recovery, your story may be something different. My challenge for all of you is to think about the major stories of your life and how they are forming your future. And take courage in sharing these stories with the people in your life, friends, family, coworkers, random strangers, because you have no idea how your story may transform someone else's life. I have looked back on my life and wondered what my potential might have been if not interrupted by my addiction at such a young age.
But where I am today is exactly where I should be. And the path that led me here today is part of my story. My story is made up of countless little stories and lessons. So in the spirit of Sitting Bull, I encourage you to carry his strength, his knowledge, his values, and grow them into your own spirit. By doing so, you continue to make your proud nation strong and prosperous for the next seven generations. Wopila, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm congratulation to the Sitting Bull College graduates. Uh, this is Sharon Two Bears. I am the chairman of the Sitting Bull uh, College Board of Trustees. On behalf of all of the board members, I wish you congratulations. This is a very special year, I feel, for all of you. And I know that you're all home staying safe and uh, protecting your family and yourself. And I'm, we wish you the best of luck in the future. I'm hoping that maybe some of you that had the privilege of being of staying at home and taking care of children will decide to become teachers because I know you had a chance to be teachers while, while you were home. So with that, I, I say congratulations again. Uh, this is going to be a very memorable year for many of you, uh, for all high school graduates and college graduates. It's a very, very special year, which I'm sure none of you will ever forget. As chairman of the board of the Sitting Bull College, I, Sharon Two Bears, have the honor to present to you the following candidates for the degree of...
Students, you may now change your tassels from right to left. In conclusion of these proceedings, the newly degreed graduates of Sitting Bull College will lead the recessional by a drive through graduation. You may honk your horns and celebrate their success at this time. Build your brighter future. Oh, and sitting